star on the Walk of Fame for mm -hmm. all of you. How did it become this entity? Would you re would you rather be individually recognized, or are you are you okay with being part of this greater empire, so to no, speak? I, I enjoy being being part of it, really, because I learned a lot from my uncles. Uh, they helped me tremendously along through my apprenticeship, and even in the business. Uh, Uncle Purse was a person that I could, if I if I had a problem, I could call him and say. Um, how do I make slime look like ice or something? And he would give me 10 ways to do it. And then when he passed away, when all the uncles finally passed away, I literally had a momentary a freak out or shock, you know, thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm gonna have to figure things out myself now. I don't, don't have other people to rely on. So it's, uh, no, it was, it, it was wonderful because in going through my apprenticeship, I was in contact with all my uncles. Uh, my dad died when I was very, very young, so uh, he wasn't around to help me, but he was a great, great makeup artist. And he, was doing, he was doing three pictures at once uh, in 1938, 39, 40. He was doing Rebecca, um, Intermezzo, and, and, and Intermezzo won an Academy Award, it was a Hitchcock film. And then um, uh, he was doing Gone with the Wind, so he was doing all three pictures, and he didn't survive it. So there was uh, no no real sense of competition. It was more of a genuine no. buoyancy. You lifted each other up. Yeah. No, with me, the third generation, I'd say no. There was no competition. My brothers and I worked together on films. No, there was tremendous competition with the uh, second generation, with my dad. Not so much my dad. Uh, Purse and Earn. Purse and Earn were probably the biggest competitors, and that occurred because of my grandfather. He actually instilled that in them, having them do contests. And he literally chained them to a table so they couldn't go play and made them stay there and tie all the hairs into the wigs and things. Uh, so there was a certain amount of competition, but really tight there. And then the other uncles kind of like stood back and became individuals because they didn't want to get involved in it. Well, since, since you stopped doing Star Trek, you've been doing a little show on sci-fi called Face Off. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell us about your role on the show? The show in its entirety has filmed 13 seasons. And I started off the first couple seasons being a guest judge. And then they asked me to come in and mentor um, one of the shows, one of the finales. And then the season after that, which I think was about the fourth season, they asked me if I would like to come in and mentor for and be with Mackenzie for uh, several hours. So actually, I would say it's, it's one of the things I really enjoy doing because even on Star Trek, I would go around and I would check everybody, every alien, every single person before they got to the set and to see how the coloring went, to see how the application went. So it was really a very easy thing to transition into mentoring uh, for Face Off, of which I really, really enjoyed because to be able to take new people that maybe have only been, some of them were only doing playing for two years, others longer. So my job was to kind of take those new people and help them to be able to compete against somebody that maybe even doing it professionally. The veterans, and, yeah. Yeah, veterans that have been doing it. And that's why I would spend, I would spend about 20 minutes with every single contestant, every single episode to talk to them about their concept, their sculpting, their colors, how to apply it. What was really fun, is, and I've heard this because at the Star Trek conventions and things I've gone to, three quarters of the fans at these conventions now are face-off fans and they love it. And I always get you told them not to do it, and they didn't <laughs> listen, and they're gone. <laughs> and it's true, because I know what V and Glenn and Neville are looking for. So when I'm giving them advice, I'm telling them, this is what you have to do to save yourself. Mm -hmm. And then a number of them don't listen. Every uh, season, it happens to one or two of them that have that just that they want to do this. I want to make that nose like that, you know. I'm saying, it doesn't work with what you're doing, you know. And then when they get it made, it goes, <laughs> like that, you know. Thank you very much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure.